Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm here with the Raspberry Pi 3 running Raspbian, and I want to test some CPU temperatures. Now, I want to test the CPU temperatures without a heatsink. Second test I'm going to run will be with a eBay heatsink. And the third test I'm going to run is with the Flirk case. So what I have here is a script that will log the temperature 40 times within 20 minutes. I have down here a script that will max the CPU out to 100% on all four cores. I'm going to idle the systems for 10 minutes before I start the benchmarks with each heat sink. Now this has been running for about nine minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this here. This is without a heat sink. I have the CPU usage here, so you'll be able to see this. I will fast forward these. It's going to create a log in a logs folder that I created, so we can compare them at the end. I'll get this ready by copying it. When I click here, it's gonna start the logging. 40 temperature logs within 20 minutes. So we're at 45.1C. When I paste in my CPU max script, it's gonna max the CPU out. So our next temperature should be higher than this. The CPU is definitely maxed out. This is gonna give us good test results by the end to see how well the Flirt case compares to a eBay heatsink and no heatsink at all. So on the second recorded temperature, it's already at 64.5 degrees Celsius. Now the CPU will start to throttle at 81.7 Celsius, and that's pretty hot for this little tiny chip. I'm gonna fast forward this, then we'll go on to the eBay heatsink, we'll run the same test. Then we'll go on to the Flirt case and run the same test again. At the end, I will take all of the data and we'll just compare it. So we are done. My CPU is still at 100%. I need to stop the script. I'm just gonna reboot the unit or turn the unit off for 10 minutes and let it cool. Up here, you can see this little yellow square. That's telling us that our CPU is getting really hot. And I did notice in here, let's open up the log file. So this is the log file, and I am going to modify this and just put no sync. So I know that this is my no heat sync file. I did see 82.7 degrees Celsius. That's 181 degrees Fahrenheit, close to 181 degrees Fahrenheit. That is hot, guys. This little sucker is smoking. This is not overclocked. I'm going to do an overclocked one of these, but I don't think I'm going to overclock it and do this test without a heat sink. Um, it's just super dangerous. So 82.7 was the highest we reached. 40 temperature logs in 20 minutes. I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna let this Raspberry Pi cool for 10 minutes. I'm gonna install my eBay heat sink. We're going to run the same test and see how that works. All right, so we're here with the eBay heatsink. We're going to run the same exact test. It's going to create another log for us. So the CPU is maxed out. It'll run for 20 minutes with the eBay heatsink, and we'll get the temperatures. All right, so the eBay heatsink test is done. The highest we reached was 81.7 degrees Celsius. Let's go into the log file and mark this log. And this will be eBay sync. Go ahead and install the flirt case. We'll run the last benchmark. Then we'll see how the temperatures are across the board. I'm going to try to create a chart. It might not be too professional, but we'll be able to definitely tell. I'm going to convert some of the numbers to Fahrenheit for our American users. 
And hopefully this flirt case keeps it cool. I'll run the temperature log with the flirt case installed. I'm gonna max the CPU out. Now I'm sure that the flirt case is going to perform better than both of them, but I'm not sure by how much. The main thing I wanna see here is, I don't wanna hit that thermal throttle with the flirt case. When you reach 81 degrees with your Raspberry Pi 3, it underclocks the CPU to 600 megahertz. So we wanna prevent that. I'll fast forward through this and we'll see what happens. The last test is done, and the max that the flirt case hit was 65 degrees Celsius, 149 degrees Fahrenheit versus 179 degrees Fahrenheit. We didn't hit that thermal throttle, and that's the best thing that we can ask for here. 65 degrees Celsius is a decent temperature for this chip to run at. Now, I don't wanna be running my chip at 180 degrees all day, and I will definitely not max out my chip for 20 minutes. So this was an extreme test. I'm gonna put the results on screen now. So here's the full chart, guys. Um, I know this is hard for you guys to see on mobile. I will leave this up for about five seconds after the video so you can pause the video if you're on a big screen. But I broke this down into nine parts. Here's the chart that I created. The first line here is at 10 minutes idle when I started the test. 45.1 degrees Celsius, 44 with the eBay heatsink, and 39.2 with the flirt case. Five minutes into the test with no heatsink, the CPU started throttling. So it brings it down to 600 megahertz, which is running half speed that your Raspberry Pi 3 should be running. It does this to keep itself cool. It only took four and a half to five minutes for the CPU to start doing this. Now with the eBay heatsink, it took six to seven minutes to start doing this. With the flirt case, we did not see that. It ran all the way through, and the highest we saw with the flirt case was 65 degrees Celsius. It's 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And the highest we saw with the no heatsink and eBay heatsink was the max temperature that the CPU is set to run at from the factory, which was 180 degrees, 179 degrees. I gotta say that the flirt case really did its job. It kept it cool enough not to throttle. 65 degrees Celsius is pretty awesome when I maxed out all four cores for 20 minutes straight. And in real world situations, I have never maxed out my CPU for 20 minutes straight. So I wanna do more tests on realistic situations, such as watching movie on Kodi, streaming movies, playing games with Emulation Station or RetroPie, uh, just browsing the web and watching YouTube within Raspbian. Now, I believe that the Flirt case is well worth the money. At $16, depending on where you are, it's going to be like $20 shipped, and it's going to be well worth it to protect the Raspberry Pi and keep it cool. So we only hit 65 degrees Celsius, and that is amazing. If you added a fan on top of the flirt case, I mean, you could keep this really, really cool. But you're not going to get any more performance out of your chip going any cooler than this. I mean, if it's clocked at 1.2 gigahertz and you're running safely at 65 degrees Celsius and it's not throttling the speed, there's no more speed increase that you will get from making it cooler than this. If you want to put a fan on it, you can definitely do that but you will not notice a speed increase from keeping your CPU super cool. Now when overclocking, it will definitely help out. So in my next few videos, like I said, I'm gonna do realistic tests and I will definitely do some overclocking with RetroPie in the flirt case. So that's it for now, guys. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below or you can send me a private message by going to my page, clicking about and send message. And like always, thanks for watching.